Hi, this is Dr. A with the ClinChem Review. Um, we're going to look at toxicology, some introductory concepts. All right, toxicology is the study of the adverse effects of xenobiotics on the body. And xenobiotics are chemicals and drugs that are not normally found or produced by the body. Uh, approximately about 24 toxins or, or drugs account for about 80% of the emergency department visits. We're going to look at a lot of those. Some of the useful clinical information to gather from the patient when they present to the ER is going to be the time and date of exposure to the chemical, the time and date of the specimen that's been collected, and of course history and current medical condition. Some exposure statistics, so 50% uh, of poisoning cases are intentional suicide attempts, so they're intentionally taking the chemical or an overdose of um, something like Tylenol. 30% of the cases are from accidental exposure, and the remainder are a result of homicide or occupational exposure. There are several major disciplines within toxicology. Um, the mechanistic discipline looks at cellular and biochemical effects of toxins in the context of the dose-response relationship. The descriptive uses the results of animal experiments to predict what level of exposure will cause harm in humans. This is more in risk assessment. And then, of course, you have the regulatory um, department in its or discipline, and it uses data from the mechanistic and descriptive uh, disciplines to establish standards regarding acceptable levels of exposures and, and overseas human safety issues that are associated with either therapeutic drugs, cosmetics, food additives, etc. Few definitions. Xenobiotics are exogenous agents that may have adverse effects on a living organisms. Um, they are often used to describe environmental chemicals or drug exposures. So again, these are things that normally would not be in your body and they you know, enter your body. Uh, poisons uh, also have an adverse effect on biological systems, but this terminology is used when you describe an animal, plant, or mineral, or a gas poison. So carbon monoxide, if you will, is, would be a poison. Toxins are substances that are biologically synthesized in living cells or in microorganisms. And then your toxidrome is a specific toxic syndrome created by a drug, a syndrome being like a collection of signs and symptoms. So uh, if you look at the collection of signs and symptoms, uh, usually you can associate it with a specific drug, especially when you take a history of the patient. So let's look at routes of exposure. The most common routes of exposure are going to be ingestion, inhalation, and transdermal absorption. Ingestion is the most often observed in the clinical setting. Toxins are absorbed by the processes that are intended for the dietary nutrients to be absorbed or via passive diffusion, meaning they can just cross over. Uh, diffusion does require that the substance can be able to cross the cellular barriers of the GI tract. And some factors that can affect the absorption in the GI tract are going to be the pH, the rate of dissolution of that chemical into the GI fluids, uh, the gastric motility, and resistance to degradation in the GI tract. The chemical state and exposure routes does influence toxicity. So, for example, the skin is going to be more susceptible to fat-soluble chemicals because uh, it is uh, the skin, if you will, is kind of a lipid barrier, right? Uh, the GI tract, if it is ingested, basically it can be absorbed in the lungs. Uh, if it is inhaled, obviously it's going to damage the mucosa, the lining of the lungs. It's also the fastest fastest route into your bloodstream because uh, basically, as soon as a chemical enters the air of the lungs, it can cross over at the alveoli into your capillaries. Uh, injection is a common route for drug of abuse, and um, eyes usually as a chemical splash or uh, exposure to a gas. A little bit on the dose response relationship. So, uh, several systems have been established to index the relative toxicity of substances and to allow uh, assessment of their potential to harm. Most systems correlate the dose of a toxin with harmful responses. Um, but if you want a more in depth approach, you have to evaluate data from a cumulative frequency histogram of toxic responses over a range of doses. And so uh, it's not always linear. That's one of the problems with uh, toxicology. More on that in a minute. Um, a dose response curve um, can be set for each chemical or drug. Um, the dose response curve is a comparison comparison, sorry, of the responses over a range of doses. Um, and there are several measurements that are usually in the dose response relationship. So one of those is the TD50. Uh, it is a dose at which 50% of the population will experience toxic adverse effects. So that's TD50. 
LD50 is the dose at which 50% of the population will experience a lethal dose. Definitely not, don't want that. And then ED50 um, is related. It's a dose at which 50% of the population will experience a therapeutic benefit with the effective dose. So that would be more in the context of developing new drugs to treat, you know, um, sim signs and symptoms or, or treat a condition uh, in LD50. Although you can get the LD50 and TD50 also on those drugs that are therapeutic because too much of it can be toxic and or lethal. Um, the toxins don't have an ED, obviously, because they're not supposed to have any kind of therapeutic benefit. Um, so a lot of them will have this, you know, the, the, this S curve. And so um, that is a lot of the assumption in, within, you know, toxicology or, or drug response is um, the response is going to be lower and lower dose and it goes up, 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 and then go like that. And the, the more, the bigger the dose you have, the more, uh, you know, you've got, this is effective, this is toxic, this is lethal, right? But the reality is, in a lot of toxins, you can, some of them you can have a linear effect, some of them you can have an effect that goes like this, but there are some of them you can have this weird U-shape um, effect where basically meaning small amounts of drugs and large amounts of drugs are way more toxic than middle amounts of drugs. And so just don't assume that they all have even S-curve or a linear curve because um, depending on the chemical and the body and the way it's processed by the body, um, you can have all kinds of different effects. Uh, the individual dose response relationship accounts for an individual's health as well as the exposure levels, whereas a quantile dose re response relationship will describe the changes in the health effects of a population based on changes of exposure to the xenobiotic or to the drug. Okay, so different ones individual, ones population based. Uh, poisons have no well-defined safe levels, and uh, some chemicals <coughs> will exhibit bioaccumulation. In those, there's no dose-response curve, and meaning that as you are exposed to them, especially if your body does not know how to detoxify them, it will go and sequester them a lot of times in fat cells. Uh, endocrine disruptors um, can um, exhibit bioaccumulation. An example would be BPA. Um, this is the thing that it covers a lot of paper receipts that are like thermal paper and stuff in the lining of tin cans uh, and stuff like that. And there were a lot of them in bottles and stuff, although they've been making efforts to remove BPA, it is still there. But anyway, those BPA, for example, is an example of a uh, chemical that does exhibit bioaccumulation. And there are some other terms. So the NOAEL or NOEL uh, is the highest dosage level at which after chronic exposure of a substance or material, it shows no adverse effect or toxicity to the tested um, animal. So it's no adverse effect level. The low AEL is the lowest dosage level at which chronic exposure to the substance shows adverse effects on tested animals. So that is the lowest observed adverse effect level. Okay. The NOEL is the highest dose of exposure level of a substance or material that produces no noticeable or observable toxic effects on tested animals. And the LOEL is the lowest observable effect level um, and it's often um, used in, when you compare, um, you're doing a study, maybe a randomized control trial, and you're looking at the difference between uh, the treated group and control group. So the NOLs and the LOLs don't necessarily imply toxic or harmful effects and can be used to describe beneficial effects of a chemical as well. So NOL and LOL are usually, they, you, they can be used for you know, therapeutic drugs and stuff like that, whereas the adverse effect ones usually are related to toxins or toxicity levels. And a little bit on acute and chronic toxicity. So um, acute toxicity occurs in a short amount of time. It's a single or multiple exposures within a short amount of time, usually less than 24 hours, and uh, adverse effect can occur within 14 days. Chronic toxicity will occur over longer periods of time. Uh, you usually see repeated frequent exposure for extended 
um, periods or uh, a continuous exposure. So that's acute and chronic toxicity. And uh, toxins can exhibit both of those. And that is it for your intro to toxic 